Hey folks, David McKnight here. Today we're going to talk about a new plugin from New Blue Effects called Colorfast. And this plugin is used for color correcting, color grading, color enhancing. And you may wonder what are the what are the differences in those terms? And I've got a piece of uh, footage in a project today that we're going to kind of show you exactly what that means. Color correcting is the process of adjusting the colors in your in your picture and your video work so that they appear at a at a normal or correct level. This could be necessary if when you've shot your video you have your camera settings uh, your white balance settings and correct. A very common thing if you're moving from an indoor to an outdoor scene and you haven't done a re rebalance on your white balance or a custom balance on your white balance these plugins can help correct that color. Color grading is a the process of using the very same controls, but to give your footage, to give your video a different look. Some popular examples always given are things like uh, television programs like CSI Miami has a very specific look to it no matter which episode you're watching. Movies like Traffic have a very distinct look to them. And in, in, in some measure, these are accomplished by using color correction tools or color grading tools to give a certain look. You're pushing a certain color, you're uh, reducing the saturation of certain colors. Now, make no mistake, Vegas in particular has uh, some built-in color correction tools uh, that you can do that with. You don't have to have a program like this. But in some cases, as you'll see, the new blue effects in particular have crammed a lot of stuff into this uh, into this plugin that to do it natively in Vegas would take uh, several tracks and in some cases uh, quite a, you know maybe two or three different instances of the plugin and a lot more time. Now I'm using Sony Vegas as my host, but uh, Colorfast from New Blue will work on most any uh, PC-based. NLE and also work in uh, Apple's Final Cut. Bringing this up in Vegas, what I've done here is I've, I've um, applied an instance of Color Fast. I also applied an instance of Color Fixer, which is part of New Blue's uh, Video Essentials program. Video Essentials is a collection of plugins that they released uh, a couple of years ago. It's been a while. It has some great utility plugins on there. The one that I use a lot is Color Fixer. I want to show you the difference between that and what's in Colorfast. Color Fixer gives you a simple uh, interface with which to adjust your color. Basically, you you tell Color Fixer what in your shot is white, and then and it will adjust all the uh, other colors around there, which is like an auto white balance. And then you can uh, play with some options like brightness and gamma and saturation and, and so forth. So I'm going to click on Sample and use my eyedropper to tell the program what's white. We're just going to click on the, the white shirt here. Then I'm going to apply correction at 100%. And then we'll apply the plug-in. And notice how the, the colors kind of pop right to where they where you might expect them to actually be if the shot had been correctly white balanced to begin with. Now you can adjust the amount of correction. You can cool it. It's pretty warm uh, when you're at 100% here. You can do just a little bit less if you want to cool it down this way. Saturation, if you increase this, all of the colors in the shot will increase. And then uh, your film gamma, by default, uh, they pump this up to a pretty good degree. I tend to use a little bit less of that. Film gamma, for me, again, this is a way that, that I use uh, this, these plugins. If I'm matching shots between a traditional camcorder and a DSLR, uh, I, on the traditional camcorder, I will I will push the gamma a little bit to help uh, help help match those those looks between the different pieces of equipment. Now the brightness control does not affect the black levels of the shot. This is different than the built-in to Sony Vegas uh, color adjustment called brightness and contrast. I recommend that you never use the brightness and contrast uh, that's built into Vegas because it affects the entire range of luminance. The brightness control and color fixer limits the range of luminance. It does not affect the black levels and has a much more pleasing uh, range of control about it.
It's a little confusing when it's called brightness. The built-in control to Vegas is called brightness and contrast. We recommend you don't use that. So that's Color Fixer, part of Video Essentials 1, which we're not talking about today. We're talking about Color Fast. I'll take this out, it gives us back to our original shot here. Color Fast gives you two levels of control, one on primary correction and the other on secondary correction. Now primary correction, let's open that up, and it has uh, mostly the same controls that we found in Color Fixer. You pick your white, get the eyedropper, we'll hit that shirt. Ah, let's activate it. And there you see our shot has warmed up quite a bit. Saturation controls adjust the amount of color in the shot. Film gamma, which in this plugin they default at zero. You can push that just a little bit. And now we have two controls, one for exposure and one for brightness. The brightness control, again, does not affect the black level. Exposure, ah, we move the exposure around, that affects the entire image. This exposure control behaves more like the standard brightness control built into Vegas, which I'm being kind of specific to Vegas here. I, unless, you really, unless it really improves your shot, I would be very uh, wary of using this exposure control uh, certainly not too much. I wouldn't have any issues with uh, pushing the brightness control if you need to if you need to bump the levels for your primary uh, primary look. Now notice on our uh, luminance, our waveform uh, monitor here, you know certainly the image that we're looking at here is uh, we, we've got some things you know bumping right at a hundred and going just a little over a hundred on the waveform. And so your shot, you know you're outdoors, it, it's a shadowy shot. Uh, the, the faces could be certainly could have been filled in. If we increase the brightness, the sky is going to be a, a little bit blown out, but it's going to help increase the correct exposure of the faces. And I will trade a little bit of blown out highlights for well-exposed faces any day. That's the original shot. That's our color corrected shot on the primary correction. Now, part of the same plugin, we have secondary correction. This is where things get really interesting. With secondary correction, you have a variety of controls for the uh, the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. And you can also create and work with masks all within the same instance of the plugin. To me, this is one of the real benefits of this plugin: the fact that you have all of this control plus the ability to mask for highlights, midtones, shadows, and a couple of them I'm going to go over in this in this review, the skin mask and the shape mask, without adding additional tracks to your timeline and without adding additional instances of your plug-in or your, or your video effects. I just want to reiterate that sp uh, specifically in the Vegas host, some of this uh, is redundant to some of the controls that you have in Vegas, but uh, you don't have the level of control that you have with ColorFast when you're using just one instance of ColorFast. They've packed a lot of goodies in just one instance of this plugin. So let's jump over to the masks. In the primary correction, we corrected the color, and in the secondary correction, we're going we're to push a color here and there, we're going to uh, back off on a color, and we're going to give the image a certain look, which uh, as you are editing and, and in post-production on your project, you can kind of manipulate the emotion and manipulate the uh, what the viewer thinks and feels about your subjects by doing some of the, by doing some of these uh, color grading techniques. So let's first show what this looks like if we want to push, for example, we want to push these. Uh, we want to give a little more of this of the red tone that's in this shirt off to the right here on the overall image. So I will select my color for the midtone. Choose this red here, and just to demonstrate what it is we're doing. Let's really push the saturation and push the tint. Notice how the image really changes to, a, to an overall red tint. This includes their faces, of course. Let's zero that back. And now this in the skin preservation color mask, let's pick what our skin tone is. So let's just pick a face right here, this uh, forehead. Now what this tells color fast is don't operate on that range of color. So we're, we are preventing 
color fast from altering the skin tones. We'll go back to our red, but we're going to enable now the skin mask. And notice how we still have red on things like the jeans and the dock, but the skin tones have reverted back to their original. So it really hasn't bled over into the, into the, uh, into the skin tones, but everything else has. And if I disable that, watch the, uh, watch the jeans and the, and the dock area here as I enable it. And the shirts, notice how there's a, a much redder tint that's added to that. But their faces pretty much have not been altered. Once you've fixed the color with the original primary correction, and you've got the, the skin tones the way you want it, you can say now, as we are pushing the color and grading the color, don't mess with my skin tones. That's pretty slick. The other mask you can work with is called a shape mask. Now, ColorFast has a neat way of showing you what your masks are and what they look like. In the drop down here, show mask, by default, you have none selected. Let's look at a couple of these. If you select highlights in our particular frame here in our picture, it, it shows you in red. Now, this is not a color grade, although that would be kind of cool, but it shows you in red the area that is to be affected if you work with highlights, midtones, shadows. This is the mask for highlights. This is the area, the mask that's going to be affected when you work with midtones, and then your shadows are here. That's what that looks like. If you remember, we applied a skin mask. And so all of the skin tones, pretty much for the, for the group that's uh, in, in this shot, this shows you how those are masked out. The skin preservation defines an area that will not be affected, facial skin tones. The shape mask defines an area that will be affected. So let's first, we want to show the mask so we know what we can see what it is that we're looking at. Now notice that you, your edges are rounded. This is one of your options. When your curve is at zero, then your, then your mask is essentially a rectangle. And when your curve is 100%, it's an oval shape. And then you have a feather control to kind of smooth out the areas between your mask and your non-mask. But for right now, to demonstrate what we're doing, let's get a, a really hard edge with no curve and no feather. And we use our controls here to define the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And for our uh, instance here, for our purpose, we want to work with just the the uh, sky. So we're going to very quickly. And now we're going to take the show mask off. So we're not looking at the mask, but we're looking at the actual uh, scene, the actual content. So let's work with our highlights. Let's pick a tint here. Let's say we want to add some blue to this. Oh, as you can see, we've already kind of cranked it up somewhat. Let's back down. Okay, the mask is enabled. Let's really kind of bump this up to show the difference. Now notice in our sky area here, if we enable this, we've really added some blues to this, but we have not affected any other portion of the scene because we're using a mask. Again, speaking particularly in Sony Vegas, some of this can be done with the built-in tools but you would require additional tracks and multiple instances of various plugins between color corrector and um, secondary color corrector. With this plugin from New Blue, it's all self-contained in one instance, and uh, you can get to your looks into your in, into correcting and degrading your image pretty quickly with this. And also, which I haven't mentioned yet, every single component of this is keyframable over time. So you can animate and change your colors as your scene changes or as you want to affect the, the color in the scene. So when you combine the primary color correction, the secondary color correction, the masks, the ability to uh, maintain your skin, con skin tones, uh, quite a lot of power with this one. And as a final result, let's look at our image. That was the original image as shot. This is our color corrected and color graded image. We kept some of those, uh, we kept the blue in the sky but fixed, uh, pretty much fixed everything else. That's all for today. I hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you next time here at Streaming Media Producer.